Quilters Newsletter TV, the Quilters Community, is brought to you by Handy Quilter, designed by a quilter for quilters, and Husqvarna Viking, keeping the world sewing for over 140 years. Hi, and welcome to Quilters Newsletter TV, the Quilters Community. I'm Mary Kate Carpetris, and I'm here today with Quilters Newsletter's creative editor, Lori Baker. Lori, hello. Hi. Um, we're here today to talk about half square triangle units, which are one of the basic building blocks of many great quilt designs. There are Correct. so many ways you can use them, and it turns out there are so many ways you can make them. That's so right. today we want to talk about a variety of those ways That's that right. people can make their half square triangle units. That's right. I want to tell about the quilt behind us first. Okay. Uh, the center of the quilt was a pig, a project in a grocery sack. And um, I don't like to make small quilts. Yes. I like to make bed size quilts. So it needed something added on. So I decided to do the borders with half square triangles. Just a plain piece of fabric is kind of boring, so I like to do pieced borders mm -hmm. when I'm having to add a lot of size to a quilt. So we've got half square triangles in two borders. And I started experimenting because there's a lot of triangles in that yeah. quilt. I started experimenting with different ways, um, just kind of playing around to see which ones I liked and which ones worked best. The first way to make a half square triangle is simply to cut a triangle. The finished size of your block is the base of the triangle and it needs to be increased by seven eighths of an inch. So I needed For four, yes. Mm -hmm. So I needed a four inch finished half square triangle. So I cut four and seven eighths inch and then you just sew on the diagonal. Now you cut a square and then you cut it on the diagonal? Correct. Okay. Correct. And that's an approach that's great when you're making a scrappy look yes. and you want to be interchanging colors yes. and maybe don't want to be constrained by automatic pairings of fabrics and mix and match. Okay. But it also has a disadvantage in that this is now a bias edge. Yeah. So you kind of have to be careful that you're not stretching that edge. I prefer even for sca scrappy quilts to cut squares and leave them as squares till after the stitching okay. is done. So I've cut my four and seven eighths inch square. I've drawn a, a diagonal line across it and then I'm going to stitch one quarter of an inch on each side of that line and then simply cut down the middle so I have two units. And then you open them up. And, and then when see. I open them up. And I think um, it's good to mention that even with cutting a square, but especially when you're cutting and stitching the triangles together, starch is your friend. Absolutely. Um, but, so there you go. Two. Okay. Interchangeable. Yes. Um, half square triangle units. That's, and that's a pretty basic way. We're going to see that yes. in a lot of places described. We describe it in doing it that way right. very often. Right. Because it's easy and... And the then results. there are lots and lots of paper products that you can simply pin the paper product onto your fabric. Remember, you need right sides of the fabric together and stitch the way it's marked on your paper product and you've got half square triangles that way. Lots of different products. Yeah, and fo just follow their instructions. Correct. They're very, um, very clear. Correct. They do only come in one inch and one half inch increments. So, which which is going to fulfill most, most of your needs. Yep. Um, and it's just, and I, I've never used those papers myself, but I know a lot of people really like them. I yep. guess I've never made a project that called for that many half square triangle units, or else I was just wasting my time trying to do. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, another way that sometimes people, when they're um, piecing their own half square triangle units, is they will cut, say, they need a four inch finished. Square, they'll right. overcut, they'll oversize their, the squares that they cut. Right. Talk about that a little bit. Okay, yes, and that is a good thing, especially the smaller your half square triangle unit gets. With a four inch finish, I'm not going to bother because there's a little bit of fudge room there. But if I were making three inch or two inch half square triangle finished. units finished, mm -hmm. I would want to 
cut them oversized and then trim them down to the size I needed for sewing. So if I were making three inch finished half square triangles, I'd probably cut four or four and an eighth inch squares, sew them and then trim them down to the three in inch, three and a half inch finished with seam that I needed with the seam allowance. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And that way you can just, um, it, you know, even with really careful piecing and careful starching, you know, it's fabric That's and right. it pulls and depending on your machine or user yes. error, you might get them a little squinchy Not in one side. Or, yeah. yeah. So if you, if that accuracy is really important to you, you might want to cut them a little larger. Okay. Yes. But now we've got this great technique. Okay. This is wonderful. This is a, a, a stencil and they come in different sizes, just like the paper does. Only of course they're reusable and yes. you don't have to tear away the paper. You can mark with chalk or you can mark with a wash away wa uh, marker, whichever you prefer. Mm -hmm. We used these uh, in an issue not too long ago where we talked about half square triangles in a cool project. Um, it was the August, September 2014 issue yeah. of Quilter's Newsletter. So you might want to check that out. So After we've marked, We have everything marked and we're simply going to sew along these diagonal lines that are on the outside. Now, this one is our cutting line okay. and these two are our sewing lines. So we'll have something that looks like this when we get done sewing and then we cut down in between the middle on the diagonals and then on the straight lines and we have Horizontal our... Horizontal and vertical lines. Right. And again, press them open and you've got it nice. And you've got a bunch of yeah. them. So it's sort of the same principle as the papers. Exactly. Just reusable, as you said. And now we can make our own papers. To do this, again, I wanted four inch finished. So I drew a square four and seven eighths in, uh, uh, inch, drew a diagonal line. And notice that I made my diagonal lines go opposite. Mm -hmm. So I can stitch in a continuous line. You make however many copies you need, pin them together. I'm careful that the horizontal line here on the top piece matches the horizontal line so I can go the whole width of the fabric right. with my stitching and then cut it apart. I don't use this if I'm doing something that I can use another purchased paper for which is those one inch and one half inch increments. Mm -hmm. I use this if I'm doing something like if I need a four and three eighths inch finish, then you can't find a paper for that. Mm -hmm. Then I would make my or papers. Even like two and three quarters. Exactly. Which might happen. Which happens, yeah, those, those unusual sizes mm -hmm. happen. What I wound up using for the quilt behind us was die cutting. Okay. And I have the die here because I wanted to show you just a couple of hints that, that I figured out about it. First, remember that I like to do things right sides together. So they told me in my instructions that I could cut eight to 10 layers of fabric. So I have right sides together for eight to 10 layers. So there are two layers, there are two layers, two layers, and two layers. Mm -hmm. Notice that the die is a little bit angled. That's so that the fabric doesn't creep as you're rolling it through the die cutter. Mm. So you want to line up the edge of your fabric with that because we're still wanting straight grain. Right. You don't, want, you don't want to have everything on the bias. Exactly. With these, everything would be on bias. Exactly. So there, that's ready to run it through the die cutter. And I like these a lot. Um, that's what I use because You'll notice the way the die is shaped, you don't have dog ears. They're already trimmed for us. And that will take up and, time. And that saves a lot. It sure does. Exactly. Especially when you've got as many going on exactly. as you have in this quilt top. Fantastic. So. Well, there you go. There you go. That, that, was, was, a, that was what worked for that one. All and, right. and sometimes it might be something else. It depends on the quilt, how many half square triangles you need. Mm -hmm. 
what fabrics, combinations, all sorts Again, of things. Again, how scrappy it might be. Exactly. How you want your fabric placement. But from these different techniques, you have a lot to choose from depending on your quilt project. Don't be afraid when you're reading a pattern, if they give you one way of making half square triangles, to investigate it, an option that might work better for you. Correct. Um, for your lifestyle and how much time you have available, because that's always at a premium for us. Exactly. Thank you so much. This was great. Thank you for joining us. We hope you'll join us next time. Take care. Bye-bye. Quilters Newsletter TV, the Quilters community, is brought to you by Handy Quilter, designed by a quilter for quilters, and Husqvarna Viking, keeping the world sewing for over 140 years.